Pandemics are a hot topic in pop culture. Your town is being quarantined. Leave the panic. But what could cause one? Before you start worrying about lab leaks or zombies, don't discount climate change. It's already making deadly outbreaks become more common, and they're expected to become three times as likely in the next few decades. Malaria, cholera, Lyme disease is spread is fast and difficult to control, so it's become a big issue. These rapid outbreaks are forcing health officials to play a high-stakes game of whack-a-mole. Cholera outbreak. Worst dengue outbreaks in years. Disease X. And find creative ways to respond. So how does climate change lead to more deadly outbreaks of disease? More than half of deadly infectious diseases have already been made worse by climate change. One reason is higher temperatures. They thrive because heat is also a good incubation factor that allows these bacteria to start dividing and flourishing. At the same time, you have more wildfires, droughts, floods, storms that are displacing millions of people, pushing them into contact with pathogens. There's increased overcrowding, so exposure has been increased amongst us as the bacteria and viruses are thriving. The impacts of climate can create a breeding ground for infections. Look at what happened in Malawi. A tropical storm, Anna, has wreaked havoc. Malawi's cholera epidemic began after tropical storm Anna overwhelmed the country's water and sanitation systems. Now scenes of devastation. Cholera is usually spread through contaminated food and water, and it could be deadly. If left untreated, it can kill within hours. 750 people have died. The total number of infections has surged to over 17,000. Malawi is no stranger to cholera, but this became the worst outbreak the country has ever seen. There was a lack of clean water, unsanitary conditions, and crowded spaces that created the perfect recipe for a disastrous outbreak of cholera. Health officials scrambled to respond, but turns out, Malawi wasn't the only place dealing with outbreaks, leading to a global shortage of vaccines. I know, it sounds bleak, but it's not all doom and gloom. Lots of incredibly smart people are working on very creative solutions. In the parts of Malawi hardest hit by cholera, there's a buzz in the air, and it's coming from drones. And no, they're not making deliveries for Amazon. Instead, they're saving lives in lots of different ways. We can use drones to deliver medicine to remote areas. We can use drones and the aerial images in order to identify stagnant waters and improve our malaria vector control. We've seen that we can map vast areas and identify what we call open defecation areas, which are residential areas that do not have enough pit latrines. And this, in turn, helps us again to battle cholera because we can see when infrastructure investment is necessary. They've even established a school in Malawi called the African Drone and Data Academy, and they're training local youth on how to use drones to improve public health. If we are able to teach them how to use drones as a tool in order to improve resilience, disaster response, to fight malaria and cholera, this is what's really urgent and what's really needed. So for me, I think the most important thing is that we acknowledge that young people want to be part of the solution. Thanks to public health interventions like these, cholera cases in Malawi have been falling proving that these outbreaks can be contained. But climate change is posing a big challenge. So the question now becomes, how do we adapt to this new world where diseases spread further and faster than ever before? I'm very hopeful because we've got the ability, technology has advanced for us to be able to predict and detect. We know they're coming, so we have to plan ahead and find innovative ways to contain these outbreaks especially before they become the next global pandemic.